Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let us learn about the use reducer hook. So React comes with this built-in hook, which is called as the use reducer hook, that allows you to add state to the functional components. It is especially used in those cases where we have to deal with some complex states. Let us first understand the syntax for the use reducer function. So the use reducer function takes in exactly two arguments so one is the reducer function and second is the initial state to begin with this invocation in turn gives us an array with exactly two items the first item being the state and the second element being a dispatch function this dispatch function is important here because we need a way for our user actions to invoke the reducer functions this we do via the dispatch function so in essence the dispatch function when called will invoke the reducer so let us understand the use reducer hook with a very simple example so i have already prepared a simple counter that makes use of the use reducer hook here i'm back on code sandbox now here we are using the use reducer hook to set up the state for our reducer counter component so let me first comment this and uncomment the above one so whenever the increment button gets clicked the dispatch will be invoked that will call the reducer passing in the two arguments the state which will come implicitly from react and the value which will be whatever is passed to the dispatch which in this case is one for the button that says increment and minus one for the button that says decrement so whatever we return from the reducer will become our new counter and here we are initializing our counter using the use reducer function so this follows the exact syntax that we discussed and the initial value for our counter is zero now finally when counter changes react will re-render the component thus updating the ui with the new state makes sense so this is a very simple example to understand the use reducer hook in its most basic form now let us say we want to reset the counter back to zero currently we can increment it or decrement it so for this let us do this a bit differently In instead of dispatching a value like we are doing here let us dispatch a type of action that we want to perform so let me comment this code and uncomment this so here is our reset button now instead of dispatching the value we are dispatching an action object with a type property so that way based on the type of action that occurs reducer can decide how it wants to update the state make sense so instead of dispatching a value we are dispatching a type for our actions let us say increment for the increment button decrement for the decrement button and reset for the reset button now inside the reducer function you can see we have changed the way how the reducer updates the state now based on the type of action that gets dispatched we are now updating our state so as the second argument for the reducer instead of value we are using the name action here we are using an if statement so for the first clause we check if the action type is increment if so then we want to return state plus one so whatever counter value we have we add one to it and then return that next if the action type is decrement then how do we want to modify the state we want to take the state and minus one from it next if the action type is reset then we want to simply return zero so let us see how this works so increment and decrement and reset so this all works fine see the benefit of this code so here you can see we have completely decoupled the counter updating logic from our component so if you have a more complex state then it is where you can leverage the use reducer hook so with use reducer the benefit is that you can write more declarative code describing what you want to do like here we want to increment the counter so we simply dispatch the type increment and the reducer does its job 
So we are just declaring what we want to do and the reducer does all the heavy lifting for us.